For us to go right now, Dave has done a little bit of background work, how the draft works, how it goes in the war room, what the coaches think. Kyle Kasky with the Bengals for a long time as their running backs coach. Here's Dave with Kyle Kasky. Kyle Kasky, football lifer. This guy's done a little bit of everything. He was a great player at Texas A&M. Uh, played the tight end position, played it very well. Was with, with the Cincinnati Bengals. Good, what, eight years, nine years, something like that. Nine. Nine years. And started out in quality control, then coaching offensive line, coaching running backs. Uh, you've been around this organization. You know this organization well. First of all, welcome, my man. Appreciate you carving time for us. No, thank you for having me. It's always good. Like, it's always good to see you. I don't see enough of you anymore. You, we used to have our, for those that don't know it, during the season, I always had a good Friday conversation with, with Dave. And yeah. it was always good to hear his his thoughts on the team we're playing and my thoughts, you know, and we just kind of shared football and talked Absolutely. football. And I, I miss that. I know. I hear that. I hear that big time. You know, um, like I said, you, you were with this organization for a good spell, uh, multiple roles, draft day. And draft has become such a huge production, obviously. It's it's must, must see TV. But besides that, it's vitally important to every single franchise, the drafting, developing, you know, players. And it's a three-day extravaganza now. First round is on Thursday, second and third round on Friday, fourth, fifth, sixth round on Saturday. You've been part of it, and you were part of it for a good period of time. What is it like? How – it's a year round deal, right? I mean, as soon as one drafts over, you're basically starting the other one to set that draft board. Take us through the process of, of during the early stages of getting ready for the next year's draft. Yeah. I mean, you hit it on the head. It's a year round thing. And now the coaches don't necessarily spend as much time during the season and during the summer, but when the season ends, it doesn't matter where you're at, what, what team you're with, you're going to be involved. Some teams more than others. I know right. when I was with the Bengals, uh, the coaches were really, really involved. And then I go to the Lions and the Jaguars, and we were asked our opinion on a certain amount of players, and we went to pro days, and we still did that. But at Cincinnati, we we kind of came up with our list. We found the guys that we were targeting, then got with Duke and the, and the scouting staff and uh, Mr. Brown and, and the, you know, Marvin at the time, the head coach, and we just talked through things and said, these are the guys we see, these are the guys we like. And you go to the Senior Bowl, you go to the Combine, uh, after that, you start going to pro days. Then you start having top 30 visits. I think everybody's heard about all that. And all that stuff hits really fast. You know, once the combine's over, you got about a month and a half and then the draft's here. So you're talking about getting as much information uh, flowing through not only you and those players, but flowing back to the team. And really, the three-day extravaganza you're talking about, the, a lot of that information, a lot of that work is done – I'd say by, you know, now. So it's, it's the, as, as we're recording, it's earlier in the week, but it, you know, what you're talking about how you can get everything done and then you're waiting. And it's like, it's like the draft days are like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. So you've got your, you've got your ideas set, you got the board set and then draft comes around. And uh, really, honestly, the, the hardest part of the draft for me as a coach was always when the draft ended and we had to do the college free agency then that was a whole different thing that, that took you back to college recruiting so there, there, there's a lot that goes into it before the draft actually starts up so once the board is set and i'm assuming uh we're, we're like you mentioned we're we're um talking earlier in the earlier in the week we're talking on tuesday the draft starts on thursday so i'm sure the big board has been set or you know, set in, I don't know about in concrete, but set, you know, set pretty well. I, I don't think there's probably a whole lot of uh, uh, adjustments to, that go on in the board. What are the dialogues like? And everybody has an opinion. Everybody's encouraged to have an opinion. And the hope is that everybody doesn't have the same opinion because there's a good, healthy discussion about these players that takes place. How is a decision made in setting the board? You know, some people may uh, yeah, I, I, this player should be higher than this player no, as you go on. How does that whole process uh, unwind? Uh, a lot of times when, when I was in Cincinnati, the, the position coaches would actually go in and initially set the board. The, the board, they would have the players up there as they were ranked by, say, the national scouting, the NFS or, or uh, Blesto or any of those, those organizations that uh, would have the scouting information out to the teams. But 
once we got our idea of where we would like them, we went in there and moved them around. Now, what would happen was we would have position coach uh, readings where we would actually read our our write ups and our rankings of the players, player by player, from our from our number one down. And then everybody would have a chance to to chime in. The coordinator, the head coach, the the scout, the scout who was responsible for that area, they would all be checking in and and saying what they thought about that player. Now, some players we might totally agree on, and some players we may not. And you go back and you look at the Joe Mixon draft pick. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of people with everything that was going on outside of football with Joe that. You know, it was just kind of like, hey, do we want him on our board or not? And after we spent a lot of time with him uh, during those draft, during the processes, the, the pro days, the he didn't go to the combine, but we got a chance to bring him in on the top 30 visit. And you spend as much time with guys like that, and then you come to find out that, hey, I mean, Joe Joe has a lot to give to a city, to a team. And, uh, you know, one, one mistake in life, sometimes they're worse than others. I get it, but – Sometimes those mistakes you need to look at and say, what really happened? And is this really what this person's about? And that's, those are the conversations that are hard sometimes because it's not just Joe. There's a lot of players out there that have red flags on them and you got to get past that. And then once you kind of set that board, then you kind of go back and say, what are our needs? You can say, these are what, these are the guys we want and put them in order. What are our needs of what we need? And then that's when the positions start, stacking on top of each other and that's when the whole other board comes in that's that was a big uh that was mainly duke tobin and uh the scouting staff along with the head coach and the coordinators uh if it came down to where we had a you know a 1a and a 1b or something at a position uh then it would come back to the position coaches and then uh bottom line is when i was there now i'm I'm not sure obviously i have not been in a draft meeting since 2018 in cincinnati but the uh uh, Mr. Brown always had full say on, on the final pick and which, I mean, he's the owner. He, he can do that. And right. he would listen to us and I, you'd be people out there that don't know Mike Brown uh, don't understand how much football the man actually knows. The man is uh, he's, he's entrenched in uh, the game of football his whole life. And he understands what it's supposed to look like. And he, but he also trusts the people around him. And uh, I thought the working dynamic within the draft room, that's why the Bengals have had good drafts. I mean, right. Really, if you look at it over time, the majority of the Bengals draft picks have been pretty solid. I agree. There's, there's no question about it. I mean, they've, they've stacked good drafts and, and acquired veteran free agents. And there's, that's, a, that's another process mm-hmm. involved in, in, in personnel decisions, obviously, but, we're talking about the draft in this instance. So, like you said, each each position has you, you list players um, based on you know the best to, down, and you t- take every single player at the quarterback position, running back, offensive line, or by position, and then you will transfer that to the big board. That doesn't matter the position. How do you have guys ranked? And as guys are picked, you know you. So, how? big is that big board i mean how many players will you have on that big board taking from the rankings of all those individual position group boards uh when it's all said and done what will end up happening is since there's i think this year's 31 first round picks because right. somebody lost them but usually there's 32 picks in each round and then you get to the third round and, and so on you get the compensatory picks but however many picks are in that round we usually would put up a, a number one through 32 or one through whatever pick we were at at the time uh, majority of the time I was there because we lost out in the first round, obviously for five straight years, we were roughly 20 to you know 21, somewhere in that range. And uh, so we would usually have those picks and then whatever pick we got to, you know, we try to see, okay, these are the guys that are going to be gone. Uh, that what we used to call high quality filler. They're guys we would love to have, but they're not going to be there. And, you know, guys like, uh, you know, Joe Burrow to every other team in the league when the Bengals were picking one, you'd love to have him, but you know, he's not going to be there. So right, right. it's guys like that. And uh, when you, when you start picking players like that, you start putting them in order of like, okay, we, we want these guys, but we also have a need. Now it, we weren't always picking on need basis, uh, which I think is, is a good idea not to, I don't think if you just pick based on need basis all the time, yeah. you start, you know, picking guys that maybe shouldn't be picked at a certain level, but uh, we would get to say uh, Tyler Eifert, I believe he was the ninth pick, I believe, that year. And uh, 
or where, whatever it was, but he was, he was not supposed to be there. He was one of those guys we thought wasn't going to be there. Right. And we had, we had our list all put together and all of a sudden you look up there and Tyler Eifert's still sitting there and it's like, I mean, you, you so do you pass Tyler Eifert up? I, I mean, I think that was a good pick for the Bengals. I mean, Tyler was a good player for sure a, a handful of years. And I think that's what you're looking for, for draft picks. You know, you, you'd love a draft pick to last 10 years, but no players or not many players last 10 years. You know, if you can get a good first contract out of a draft pick and then, you know, get them into a second contract, I mean, I think you've won that pick. And, uh, that's where these guys have got, you know, we, the, the list of guys that we put on the board is more based on how we have them ranked. And then maybe there is a group of guys like, like this year, I think the, the Bengals need tight ends. So right, roughly probably around the Bengals pick, there's going to be a cluster of tight ends. You know, they're going to have those tight ends. And if there's four of them, if it's the Notre Dame kid, the Utah kid, say it's those two, and you're trying to fight between the two, which one do you take? Well, then they, they've had that fight between those two. And then they put, uh, you know, whichever one they want above it. And right. uh, that's kind of how it does. The second round kind of moves the same way. Then you start filling in from like pick 21, or I guess the, the Bengals have what, pick 29 20, or 20, 28. Yeah. 28. Yeah. So they got the 28th pick this year. So then they'll fill in from 29 through the end of the second round. Um, and then the crazy thing is, is between Thursday and Friday. So Thursday night, the first round ends, we'll all look up there and go, wow, there's still, you know, four players that we had ranked in the first rounder. Yeah. So Duke and his team, they go in there and they did a great job of it. That We had this big wall that you could dry erase, with dry erase markers on it. You just draw on the wall. They would get it all erased off of there and then they would rewrite it up there and then they re-rank everybody. So then when you come in on Friday, you have another meeting and say, okay, here's where we think it's going to land. Here's the next group of players that we need. And then you move on. And when Friday's over, then it's like kind of a – its a, I hate to say it's a free-for-all in those last few rounds, but a lot of the really, really good ones have been picked. So now you start looking at, okay, we need certain – we need offensive line depth. We need defensive line depth. We need safety depth. We need whatever it is. And then you start kind of putting it in order of that to see who's left. Uh, you know, and then you, it's – it goes so fast on Saturday – uh, because it drops down to like five minutes per pick at one point. And I mean, it's, it's rolling. And especially if you've got a couple of those compensatory picks in those right. rounds, right. I mean, all of a sudden you're taking guys off the board left and right. And it's, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's fun, but it's, it's fast. You better have, you better be organized. If you're not organized, uh, it's going to be tough. Yeah. So I, that's, I, that was going to be one of my questions. What the biggest difference between, you know, day one, the first round, day two, second and third round choices, you, you're resetting your board like you describe and all that, but the time constraint, you know, shrinks, mm-hmm. shrinks, shrinks. Is, is that, is that the biggest difference is, is you have to, uh, you have to be think ahead even a little bit more. You have less time on the clock. So not that you're not all through the draft, but what is the biggest difference in the selection process you go, as you melt it down on a round by round basis? Uh, I think it's the fact that you, cause at that point you don't necessarily have as good of a feel for who's going to be there yeah. and all the position coaches, at least I did. I, I know a lot of the other guys did too. I had my list of guys that were from like for running backs. I usually had about 55 to 60 guys ranked of, of players. And you know, I, I not, there's never going to be that many running backs taken. So it was, that was my list of guys that I had them ranked. Right. And then if we got to the fifth round and I still had my fifth ranked guy up there, then that's where I was marking them off. And that's if they came to me and said, all right, we need a running back. And that's when, you know, you start, you know, I, I wasn't the running back coach when we, when we took guys like Rex Burkhead, but th- that's how guys like that, you know, all of a sudden they're still sitting there and yeah. then Rex Burkhead's still playing. So what? it's not, it's not a, it's not a, an exact science, but you got to be ready. Like you got to, as a position coach, as a coordinator, as, as a head coach, the, as coordinators, the, our coordinators were great. They always, we always came together and we said, all right, here's our, here's our top hundred offensive guys. And we, we put them all in order. And that's where we, we handed that over to the guys upstairs. And um, we, we went off that. Once we made a decision on that, uh, we lived off of it. And then obviously uh, when trades are made late in the, late in the draft, that's when you got to start paying attention. Cause you just never know. Like if, if we decide to trade up, in the fifth or sixth round 
you just better be ready to go. You don't, you're not going to go wander off too far. You're not going to go down to your office and start eating lunch. You, you're going to probably hang out in the draft room and be ready to roll. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.